Hey y'all, wanted to take y'all through the garden real quick, show you what's been going on over here, uh, the changes that we made. Uh, the garden's going to look a little bit differently today. Uh, we went ahead and pulled out a, a squash zucchini. It was just eat up with vine borers. Uh, we had put up enough for us, so uh, we figured we might as well just pull it and uh, we'll start getting those areas ready for the fall garden. But I'm going to take you around and show you real quick. So this is where the squash was. We pulled out all that squash today. We have harvested a lot of that. Uh, it's done pretty well for us this year. Last year wasn't so good, and this year, just the opposite. Uh, we racked up on squash pretty quick. Now, over here, we had the zucchini. And again, it's looking pretty empty. And I think we decided today we're probably going to plant our uh, uh, broccoli over here. Uh, we talked about that, and I think that would be a, a good idea. We're going to try to get some seed started here in the next few weeks um, inside. We'll go ahead and start them a little bit early indoors, and then direct sow some more. Um, these melons over here, let me see if I can get a better better picture. So these melons, this is the uh, some mixture of cantaloupe and rich sweet 132 melons. These plants are getting sick. And they look pretty uh pretty rough. Oh, I got a visitor, y'all. But I think this is uh this is either blight or maybe mosaic virus. I'm not sure entirely. But if y'all know, uh please let me know. I'm curious to know what that is. It seems to be uh pretty prevalent. It came on pretty quick. But these are the uh rich sweet 132 melons. When these things get ripe, they'll be like a red and orange striped melon. Um, excited about those. We did harvest one of our chrysanthemum melons today and tried it. I think it probably could have went a couple more days on the vine, uh, but it, it was pretty good. It was pretty good. If you never had it, it's like a uh, uh, mild tasting cantaloupe, uh, but we enjoyed it. Uh, kind of a smaller melon. Now the cucumbers, they're still doing good. They are starting to get hit with a little bit of disease, but as you can see, they're rocking right along. Probably won't have too much longer on these, and we're just going to do one round. Uh, probably going to get started on the fall garden, garden a little bit earlier this year. Uh, and here's a question I have for y'all too. If y'all can identify this plant, please let me know. I'm not sure if this is one of my wife's flowers or if this is a weed. And I'd hate to pull it if it's her flowers. And I don't remember what we put here. So if y'all got any advice, I'd appreciate that. Look at these marigolds, y'all. These things are almost as tall as that trellis. And that is about, about a six foot trellis. That's crazy. Tomatoes are still doing pretty good. Uh, we have had a couple die. Um, I'll go into that more in another video, kind of give you my opinions on what did better, what didn't do so good, what tasted the best, um, what didn't taste as good. But These cherry tomatoes, I put stakes in the ground, and look, they're growing so fast and so vigorous that they're pushing these stakes over, and they were hammered into the ground. But we've We've gotten a lot of tomatoes. Yellow pear. So far, probably my favorite cherry tomato. Now these over here, these are still doing really well, these slicer tomatoes. Uh, check this out. This is the hillbilly. Never grown this one before. It's supposed to ripen into like an orangish yellow. And this plant is a little stingy, but these tomatoes are massive. So I'd like to know how they taste, but it seems to be a good producer. Now, this poor little fella here, he is gone. That was a Cherokee purple, and pretty well all of my Cherokee purples besides one has died so far this year, so uh, take note of that. Now the Romas down here, it was, it was doing very well, and um, it's dying as well. And it seems to be mostly on this side of the trellis, y'all. 
So I don't know what the situation there is. Uh, that other Cherokee purple there, it had died. But um, if y'all got any any uh, advice on why the tomatoes on this side of the trellis are dying, and these are not, please let me know. Because I'm at a loss on that one. Look at this super sweet 100. This thing is just took, took over the cage, took over the stake, sprawling on the ground. Now, that's partly my fault. Because I didn't prune them as, as often as what I should. But I, I'm just, I'm just going to let it go, y'all. See what it does. Do its thing. This is also a very good tasting tomato. Now, we harvested corn today. Our first round of corn. Uh, we've got stalks producing two, maybe three ears. Uh, we went ahead and picked the first ones of those. We got 52 ears of corn. So I think we're going to have a good bit of corn today. Um, we did have some strong winds come through with a little thunderstorm and uh, blew some stuff over. But the sun will straighten that right back up. Let's go over here. Okra. It has really, really caught on this past week since it started getting hot. I did pick this yesterday. And look, we could pick it again today if we wanted to. But we're gonna give it a we'll give it another day. So far we got a lot of okra too, y'all. A lot of okra. Now one thing I'll tell you about the corn. This is uh this is all sweet corn right here. Um, this is peaches and cream. We prefer this one as far as the taste. It's a great tasting corn. We did try some popcorn, the atomic orange. Um, it didn't fill out very well. Uh, just didn't didn't do what it was supposed to. Not sure why that is. Uh, so we we pulled it out. We also picked a bunch of carrots today. Uh, I think it wound up. Uh, Maybe a gallon of carrots. Still got quite a more there we could pick. Now I went and pulled out all the radishes today. They were done. And these onions. I'm going to and picked a lot more of those two. Thin them out. Uh, we're going to use them on a soup starter we're going to make. And maybe some of these bunching onions too right here. Now pulled out all the beans today. The bush beans. Except for these. I'll try to get on those tomorrow. Um, one thing I learned the other day that I read that bush beans are basically a determinate variety of bean. So they're going to produce a set amount of fruit and they're just going to be done. Uh, pole beans, on the other hand, um, is more like an indeterminate. Um, it's going to grow until the frost kills it. Um, my opinion, based off of this year, I think from here on out, we're probably just going to grow uh, pole beans. Of different varieties put in some more trellises mainly because it's just so much easier to pick y'all besides the bush beans i mean these these purple hole beans right here running up this trellis so easy to pick so easy to pick the bush beans you down on your hands and knees you flipping it over trying to get what you can and i think this is going to be our way these purple hole beans sure are pretty though. We put up quite a few of these as well. Still got to keep on the counter. We need to process as well. Look at that guy. And let me show y'all these chrysanthemum melons. And so we harvested the first one today. Tried it out. It was a nice little melon. Uh, not super sweet. Uh, just kind of a mild, mild sweet flavor. Look at all these things. I mean, they are just all back in there. And then your random honeydew. And once these are done, we got to decide what we're going to plant here as well for the fall garden. 
And uh, that's another thing I'll tell you guys too. If you've never planted the fall garden, I recommend you do it. It is a uh, very rewarding. Pest pressure is not as heavy. Uh, you don't have to weed near as much. And if you grow the right stuff, it'll grow all through the winter, at least for us, it's on 7B. And you can harvest food all winter long. Poor Cosmos. I don't know if the wind got him or if he's just so so tall that he fell over. And it looks like they looks like they're just getting too tall. Hey, that's a good problem to have. Here's the aftermath of our squash bean and zucchini removal. Throwing it on top of the compost pile there. I uh, got to get some more brown material. I've got some uh, leaves and uh, straw uh, mulched up. I need to mix it in here and get that going again. Peppers, of course, they're they're doing really really good. They're producing heavily. Harvested a good bit of these hot banana peppers today. Harvested some more eggplant. More jalapenos. Really liking this variety of jalapeno, y'all. It's called the mammoth jalapeno. And these things do get big. We harvested some today that were about an inch, inch and a half longer than this variety here. Um, really good for like jalapeno poppers, stuffing. Uh, we took ours today. We just took them, washed them off, cut them in half, and uh, stuck them in a bag, freeze them. Uh, you can pull them out and unthaw them, and they won't really get mushy on you. Uh, you can just reuse them. Habaneros back there. I picked a couple of those, and uh, I think we're going to try to make some hot sauce.